You guys are down? All right, let's watch the tool-assisted speedrun for Crash Bandicoot 1 for the PlayStation. That... So I am entirely fluent in Japanese now that I've been speedrunning the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night. I will say that does say Crash Bandicoot. That's not what it says. I'm pretty sure that's now loading actually. <laughs> Tass Bandicoot. So I do know a little bit about this game. Um, the primary movement option you're gonna be seeing Crash do is like, if you look very closely, see how he's moving left and right? Like that, he's kind of, wiggling like that um that's called zigzagging essentially what you're doing is you move slightly faster by adding the vectors of two separate forward directions instead of just holding forward so going forward left and then forward right back and forth is slightly faster um than going just straight forward because of vectoring basically Damn, these jumps are tight as fuck. I, controversial opinion, think that the Crash Bandicoot series is overrated, personally. However, for its time, I understand that it was incredibly impactful. I'm looking at it from a critical eye in the modern lens, modern era. I think it's slightly overhyped. I think because it was one of the first competent 3D platformers on the PlayStation is the only reason it is a fondly remembered IP. Or if it had continued to like make better games later on, that would also would have helped because Crash kind of fell off after the uh, PS2 era. Because the actual mechanics of Crash are very, very janky. Um, but this was a period of time where 3D mascot platformers obviously had a huge boost in the mainstream because like everybody was... Dude, freaking Gex the Gecko existed. Like, if Gex could sell copies, Crash Bandicoot is gonna crush in that environment, you know what I mean? I do like the fact that the, the task is completely avoiding these enemies. Huh? Did the Japanese version change the textures of the TNT crates to just become bombs? Is it because in Japan, the the um, acronym TNT isn't like known to be explosive. That would make sense. As a regional change, instead just show a bomb. Cause they definitely say TNT, unless I'm being Mandela effect right now. Are we getting Mandela affected right now? Imagine it's always been a bomb and it never said TNT. I would fucking lose it. Yeah, Nitro, I'm gonna be curious to see what Nitro says. Ow. Mm. Wait a minute. Is this part of the task? Strategically not breaking every box, but breaking enough boxes such that, because I do remember when you finish a level, if you don't collect or if you don't break all the boxes, you have to sit through this animation where a bunch of boxes fall on your head and the game's like, you missed these, you dumb piece of shit child. Go back and play our shit video game some more so you can 100% it arbitrarily. So it is interesting to see them like optimize those um, like end level. I'm sure in normal speedruns that's also a thing. I haven't followed normal speedruns for this game since like 2013. I'm gonna be honest. So my memory of what a normal speedrun of Crash One looks like is very very outdated. Only one crate drop. No matter how many boxes are left behind. Wait, is that true? In the Japanese version, only a singular crate drops every time. Is that why they're playing on the Japanese version? Because that makes sense. Because that would probably save a crap ton of time. I do know that the Japanese version also has different um, enemy, cy enemy cycles. Oh, I remember this. This is, um, I forget the name of the mechanic, but you are invincible during your spin, in, uh, spin attack. So if you time your spin properly, you can like interact with objects that are supposed to kill you and get boosted from them. I don't remember what it, the, 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 what the tech is supposed to be called, but I do remember that. Seeing a bunch of them lined up like that in a row is kind of crazy, though. It's a different level order, too? Okay. So the Japanese version is quite a bit different, because I remember in the Crash series, each game has a different 
version that's optimal. So if I remember correctly, Crash 1, Japanese is optimal, because obviously we're seeing the reasons why now, at least for any percent. I don't know if it's also optimal in 100%. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, also, this is a great level to showcase th what zigzagging can do to gain speed, because normally these levels, the boulder is supposed to be behind you the entire time, like in frame. But with zigzagging, you can end up um, and some slope jumps, I, I assume. You can end up way ahead of these boulders. Like, they're completely off screen. Like, it's supposed to be right behind you the whole time. So it's a great showcase to show, like, how much time is saved from zigzagging. Like, the boulder's gone, basically. So if you're wondering why they're zigzagging, that's why. It's, it's just fast. Also, you can only zigzag in the air. That's why they're jumping all the time. I forgot to mention that part. The reason why the, the task is constantly jumping is because in the air you're able to zigzag, but you can't zigzag on the ground. Yow! Oh, this level... Press 1 in chat if you died 10 billion times as a child in this level. This is like the first real difficulty spike in the game that I remember. Because it's a lot of... I'm sorry. Is Crash Bandicoot Jesus in the... Is Mr. Tass actually just Jesus? Walk on water? So... The same trick they were doing before, I assume, also works on water? Where if you're spinning for certain frames, you're invincible, so therefore you can't, like, fall in the water? That, or they're using, like, weird geometry of, like, the edges of some of these hitboxes, like maybe these leaves. Maybe he isn't jumping on water. I'm trying to figure this out. Is he jumping on water or not? I guess not. He, he is just jumping. No, he's not jumping on water. It looks like he is, but he's jumping off the edge of those leaves. Oh, interesting. Very, very interesting. Really, really tight platforming to make these cycles, I guess. Huh, cool. Cool level, I like that. Easy level, all right, all right. I think Crash 1 is a hard video game for a child. I'll say it, man. I think this game's hard, specifically for a child. Shit, if you made me play Crash 1 right now, I would probably need to do like an infinite lives cheat, straight up. It doesn't help that I the the platforming is kind of janky as well. Also, my favorite part of every task is when they have nothing better to do, he just walks through that staff. All right. And they're just showing off. Like this is all time that like you can't save anyway, so the task just shows off. The bridge level is also what is it? Road to nowhere, I think is what it's called, whatever the fuck. I I remember that level. I do know that in the speed run, you just walk on the side. Yeah, zigzagging is making a lot of these cycles also line up uh, a lot better. I'm pretty sure you have to wait for some of these cycles if your zigzagging is not good. Oh, that's a tight cycle to make between those rolling stones. Ooh, wow. Very, 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 very tight cycles here. There's a couple of BS levels in this game. We're, we're all aware that Crash 1 is has some doo-doo, has some, some stanky, dirty levels. Most of them, if we're being real. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mr. Tass, however, killing it. The best to ever do it, really.
Is he saying pizza? Pizza. As he enters every level. Oh, dude, this shit also fucked me up as a kid. This auto scroller. You cranking your hog over there? Crash. Is this? If the speedrunners don't call this zigzag tech cranking your hog, I have lost all respect for them. He was in the pit! Crash is cranking his hog so fast. He's cranking his hog so fast he's unable to die. He's like skipping giant uh, pits. That's the first time you've ever heard that euphemism, cranking your hog? Just Google it. <laughs> Google cranking your hog rule 34 Crash Bandicoot. You'll, you'll figure it out. Also, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in this level that I'm not going to talk about. He gets a crisp or a gem there. Why does he get a gem there? Pizza. Pizza. What's the gem for? Cuz this is any percent. Because you get them for breaking every box in the level. So maybe it's just like because it's an auto scroller, you have time to break every box in the level. So it ends up being faster for that regard. That's probably my guess. What a cycle skip using the invincibility from the. Right there. The invincibility from the spin. I will say the sound effects from this game are just like lodged into my brain from playing this game so much as a child. All the box breaks, spin sound effects, the jumping sound effects. The sound design in this game is good. Check him PC. This is not normally. I'm not saying... That looked like he was just... Mr. Tass definitely might be cheating, guys. It was not only coyote time, it was, I'm pretty sure, my analysis, if I had to guess, is what's happening here is we're taking advantage of this coyote time and then spinning to barely make that jump because then you get pushed out of this object is this one of those is this the game where if you spin off of a ledge you can jump anytime after the spin is over pretty much like it extends your coyote time by spinning and then jumping i think one of the crash games you could do that where if you spin off of a ledge you can jump at the end of the spin and have like essentially a ton of coyote time from that i think it's this game Dude, it looks so ridiculous that you just have iframes after spinning. Where you're just like jumping on spikes. Like all this stuff should kill you. This jump is, that's bullshit. This? Dog, you're in the fire. You should be dead. Oh my. No, nah, I think this guy actually just turned on uh, a god mode cheat. Uh, walk through walls, god mode, uh, infinite... Infinite jumps, air jumps. Like, this guy's just clearly cheating, right? Crash is too dumb to die. <laughs> that looks so absurd. This with hitboxes enabled would be really cool. Yeah, probably, yeah. Beats up. I'm gonna stop pausing, otherwise we're gonna be here all day. What do we got? So he gets the mask. Oh, he gets the mask to damage boost through the water. Interesting. So he isn't actually Jesus, he's just... Okay, I said I wouldn't pause, but dude, what the fuck? So he lands, spins, jumps, into another jump? Or does he spin onto a piece of geometry that bumps him up? 
and then he jumps after the spin because as we talked about earlier, you can jump out of a spin in this game. Is that what's happening? I don't understand what's happening. Is he just double jumping? That's crazy. Occam's razor is starting to point more and more towards Jesus. Okay, I have no words for this. He's just jumping on water. I don't I don't I I don't know what's going on! I'm losing my mind! He got the jetpack from Crash 2! Dude. He's not going to the bonus levels! Mr. Task, go to the bonus level! I, I, I don't understand what's happening with the, the water cycles. I, I, I tried my best to understand it. This is above my pay grade. There's some weird hitbox coyote time shenanigans going on right now. I, This is funny. He's probably like pixel perfectly aligning himself at the edge of these platforms to make it look as like scary as possible. Cause you're not normally supposed to be able to share a platform with this uh, boss. But I guess by positioning yourself perfectly, it doesn't matter. And then if you fall in the water after the boss dies, it maybe doesn't matter is what we just saw there. Why is that big TNT and not, you know, they probably didn't have the resources. Those, those did say TNT. I wasn't paying attention. They probably just didn't have the budget. What? Is this, is this basically the equivalent of a proxy from like Spyro games? Where if you're inside of an object, the game is trying to push you out of that object and it gives you a shit ton of momentum to do that and then you take advantage of that momentum? Like, was he inside the body of that enemy and that's what caused it and then he maintained the momentum by doing, like, spins and jumps and shit? Dude, this task is awesome. You know a task is good. Oh, baby. Look at that. Oh, my God. Wait, no. You can just do that with that enemy. It's not even getting, like, crushed between two objects. I guess the enemy just can cause that zip to happen. You know a task is good when it makes you want to play the video game. I'm watching this, and I'm like, damn, I kind of want to boot up Crash 1. I would immediately regret that. And turn the game off. But this is making Crash look fun. Dude, these, these like zoomy tech things, I is really cool. This is so cool. No, I know myself. I would boot up the game and then immediately say, you know what? I've had enough. Yeah, literally my childhood is being destroyed right now. Again, I can't keep pausing, but there's almost every one of these jumps I want to like, like that jump right there, I want to slow down. Okay, I, I know I, I said I wouldn't pause, but dude. You can just wall jump in this game? How precise are these wall jumps? Because dude was clearly below... Spun into the platform and then was able to jump afterwards. Like... That doesn't really confuse me. Because a lot of these jumps, it makes sense. Like, you're jumping on, like, the last possible pixel that Crash can stand on. That makes sense to me. But going underneath the platform and then, like, jumping your way up with, like, spin jumps, that doesn't make sense to me.
The platform lowered into him? Maybe. Pizza. Pizza. There's some weird shit going on. Oh, here it is. Yeah, if you didn't know, you could just stand on the rope. Normal speedruns have been doing this for, for a long time. Because you use the rope to help get through. But this level is so fucked. From a casual perspective, this level is so fucked. If I ever played this game on stream, this is the level that would make me rage quit. 100%. Or force me to just use save states to get through. Oh yeah, those are ice platforms too. They put ice physics on this bridge level for some reason. They really thought that that was a smart idea. I'm getting blinded. Yeah, uh, you know, flashbang. Ah, cover your eyes. It's almost gone. There we go. We're safe. Dude, we're like less than halfway through the run too. I'm sure it gets crazier. Flash bang to coot. After this one, we'll get back to doing speedruns. But this is definitely uh, a nice breather. Nice little break to refresh, re-energize, watch some silly stuff. Yeah, zigzagging is crazy. You know it's crazy when you see that... Like, if you've ever played these games before, you know the boulders are supposed to be right behind you the whole time. So being able to outrun them like this is... The boulder's gone. It's just gone. Bye-bye. More tight platforming. I will say this game has a very nice aesthetic, and I think that is very few games I think can get away with an aesthetic like this. I mean, some of the some of the imagery might be a little insensitive in modern uh, with modern sensibilities, but still, you know, there's probably a way to do it that's not like racist or whatever. Dude, these freaking tower levels are also so brutal. This might be, I, I don't remember if I ever made it this far as a kid. I, I have memories of maybe doing, okay, come on, not doing that. I'm gonna let this one slide, Solar. Normally I'm not a big fan of, of that particular joke, but you did it in a unique enough way. Okay, we're just we're just dancing on these platforms. I mean, you have to wait for these cycles regardless, so I understand, but like, come on. You're just swagging out. At least Mr. Tass isn't just flying straight up true. That was a damage boost. Okay, I was like, how are you going all the way down there and making it back up? Dude, imagine trying to line up these cycles as a child. Oh my god. Good luck, Namco. Play if you've never played Crash Bandicoot for the PlayStation 1 before and you're booting up now for the first time, Godspeed. There's a reason this game got memed on for being compared to Dark Souls. It really is the Dark Souls of 3D mascot platformers. Crash just edging the whole level. 
I wouldn't necessarily phrase it like that, but, well, actually, after seeing him do that, yeah, I am going to phrase it like that. He is edging. Are you standing? Son, you standing in the lava? What you doing in there? Son, get out of the lava. The crash commercials were unhinged. They were pretty unhinged, yeah. Crash looks extra st stupid, right? Like, look at his face. Like, why is he looking like that? Did they change the way that he looks in the Japanese version? Because I know that's like a common thing for 3D mascots. Is they like, will change the, the look of the character? At least in promotional materials. I didn't know if they would change it in the actual game itself. Maybe that's just what he looks like in Crash 1. I remember him having angry eyes for some reason. That could just be the... The promotional material sticking out of my brain. So I'm pretty sure if you touch any of those cold... So the, the, the ice platforms have ice physics, right? And then the hot platforms kill you? The red ones? That's a skip. It was from Crash 2 onwards. Ah, gotcha. So he always looked this dopey and weird. I like, I like this look. He's cute. What a skip. So I guess he was interacting with those platforms on the way up that like spring you up and he was just doing that to constantly gain vertical speed. That was crazy. Sometimes you can just fly. Pizza. So we went from you know, being in the jungle on the island to invading the, the, the castle. And the castle is full of science. I'm just giving you guys a lore update. Because when they said Crash Bandicoot is the Dark Souls of 3D platformers, they didn't mean this necessarily because of the difficulty. They meant because of the deep world building that these games have. See, if you pick up enough masks, you'll get item descriptions of... Um, for example, if you uh, uh, see right here, it says Cortex Power underneath. That's actually a hidden um, message from the developers. That has deep lore uh, uh, implications. This is just like Soten. It's more lab than castle. True. Pizza. Pizza. Like, how many levels are we going to just watch this guy be Jesus? You know what I mean? Yeah, just getting a bunch of midair jumps is, like, somewhat understandable for... Is this the first time we're seeing the full mask upgrade? For invincibility? It must be to make some of these platforms possible? Was he on top of that? Oh my god, so much is happening. He's, like, jumping around in the background. My guess is those... Yeah, he's just jumping on the background. I was going to say maybe the background does damage to you, or maybe it was intentional to pick up the mask because it made the platforming easier so that way you could get through certain enemies that were in the way. Something like that. Christ Bandicoot. He's just fucking flying. I feel like the camera is really close up on Crash Bandicoot's ass right now. Is it just me? Like, we were a little too close. Oh, 
Holy wow! Wow! This level is hellish because of the camera. That's what I'm feel feeling, right? Like, I can't see what's behind. Oh my. Like, how are you supposed to react to that? If you were playing casually, obviously Mr. Task can see into the future. He has the, 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 the thing that lets him see the code. Mr. Tass is literally in the Matrix. I mean, some of this stuff, I don't know how RTA viable some of these strats are. I do remember there were some crazy jumps back when I watched RTA speedruns of Crash uh, way back in the day. I'm sure nowadays it's also pretty crazy. But... What? Yo, is this guy getting infinited? Oh, he's not. Okay. I don't really understand what's going on right now, but it's very funny. Who gave this rat a Tommy gun? See, that's the lore questions that we need to answer. There is a lore reason why he has a Tommy gun. I just need to pop open the, the Vati video, video to explain the Crash Bandicoot lore. Dude, it's so bright. Oh my God. Just, can we like, just, ah, oh, just turn it down. Just ask Dinner Dog True. Yeah, if you are showing up late, uh, we're watching this task. And one of the primary ways that you stay alive uh, is you use the spin move to give you a brief period of invincibility, and they're taking advantage of that invincibility a lot. I came across this stream from a typo. How does that happen? I'm also not speedrunning right now. We're watching a task. I'm taking a quick break from speedruns because I want to rest and not burn out. And somebody suggested we watch the Crash Bandicoot task. And so far, this has been crazy. Wait, this isn't Soden? No, it is. Just it's the new um, expansion pack. Dude, those zips are crazy. I wish I understood how they worked. Also, these platform skips are like, how are you able to jump off the platform when it's inside the wall? That's like the whole gimmick is that you're not supposed to be able to. It must be super precise. I have no clue what's going on. Dude. These zips are so cool. Where is he? He's gone. Where'd he go? Huh? What? Huh? This is just bullshit. Oh my god. It's canonic. The, the canonic lore is that Crash Bandicoot is actually Jesus, and in that moment, he ascended back to heaven, but now he's back on the mortal plane again. To fucking go super fast. Oh my god, dude. This is wild. Pizza. 
pizza. We only got about eight minutes left. I, I don't know how much of that is a credit sequence, if there is one. So we're probably close to the end of the game now. I know in this level you can jump off to the side here. Oh, well, he, he just got past it. Also, there's like a mechanic where I think the masks, if you have two of them, illuminate what's going on so you're able to see better. But obviously, Mr. Tass doesn't need to see shit. Which is why there's masks everywhere. But yeah, these like side platform things you're able to stand on. Normal RTA runs definitely do that. Where you just jump off to the side to um, line up your um, platforming better. This is just like dark fat. Yo, this is just like Soten. Holy crap, they're moving in the dark? I love this video game. Beats up. I think we have like two more levels left. Two or three. Also, we're inside of the castle right now, are we not? Why are we back to like this like stone architecture darkness level? That doesn't make sense. Oh, this is the change the level order. What? You just clipped through that platform for no reason. I'm losing it. Like... Starting to wonder if the source code for this game was some nice pasta. Look, it's early 3D platformer source code, so I'm sure it's perfect. Did the game just freeze there for a second? Did it have t trouble loading in the next section? I think they also changed which levels you get certain colored gems, so the 100% route would be different too. That's interesting. Okay, we're, we have a handful of levels left. I don't really... Isn't that level like a, a you need to go... What? That's the green gem route? I, I don't remember the normal progression for this game, I'm going to be honest. Also, this dude moonwalking. It is Soten. Wait a minute. Guys, wait. Come back. It's Soten. They're moving backwards. Just like... Ah. Uh. What the fuck is happening, by the way? <laughs> It's Creature! Guys, it's Soden! No, 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 come back! We're doing Soden again, I swear! Alucard just turned himself into a furry. Pizza! I gotta find some dev video on how they... Deep dive video on how they made this. Dude, if there's like a making of Crash Bandicoot video out there, I want to see it. Is this the last level before the final boss? That fairy skin looks dope. Yeah, there's one more non-level, yeah. Okay. Nice.
Bonk. No. Did you know? I've never known gaming. They keep asking me, did you know gaming? I've never met anyone with the name gaming. So I'm not, I'm unaware. Why is that a level? I'm sure there's reasons for it, but again, I have I don't remember the normal progression for this game, really. It's a secret skip. Oh, dang. Oh, let me translate. He says, um, fuck you, Crash Bandicoot in Japanese. I'm fluent, by the way. Crash, you're falling off the blimp. What are you doing? Look at him. He's struggling to stay on. No, Crash, don't fall. Ah! If you have all the gems, you can just go to the side and not fight the boss. Oh, really? The game just ends? No. Crash poking holes in the blimp. Everybody says how, like, the Smash Brothers... Uh, DLC stages always have like some cinematic camera angle as they like move around and give you motion sickness. They're just copying Crash Bandicoot. Look at this shit. This shit looked like a smash level. <gasps> and then Crash gets laid and that's the end of the video? Wait, is the whole point of the video game so you can get laid? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a speed run. So this is a sex percent speed run is what you're telling me. Beautiful tasks. Beautiful tasks. Shout outs. Prio Hiko for the tasks. That was a good time. I had a, I, my brain was melted. Look at the 75 people that clicked dislike. They're also saying, Lamau, cheater, you're just walking on water, et, et cetera, et cetera. Dude, that was cool. Oh, fun little um, destruction of my childhood, I guess. My childhood has been destroyed. Shout out to Mr. Tass for making another banger.